<laughs> Here we are. So what I think I'll do is I'll have this one little banner. What business would you like to start just down there? What do you think? Yes, okay. I think that's fantastic. So we'll get to find out what sort of businesses people are thinking about. Yeah. And a business could be a full-on business. It could be a lifestyle business. It could be a side hustle that people want to get. You know, this is a great time. You know, there's a lot of people have got a bit of extra time right now. Mm. And, you know, if you just want to lay on the couch for a few days and watch Netflix or read your favourite book, or <laughs> why not do something productive? Because yeah, you but know, eventually you have to do something, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I bet almost everybody I've ever spoken to has had that that little dream that they think, mm. oh, I wonder if I could start my own business. You know, yeah. as things happen when things are live, there is someone at the door. You keep talking. I'll be right back. I'll keep talking. Oh, my goodness. That's just so funny. The, the, the Jane's front doorbell is just rung. So one of the things I love talking to people about is getting started in a business because everybody's got this quiet dream, like Jane was just saying. Pretty mm. much everybody in the whole world has this whether they put it out there and they've given it a go or whether they um have this quiet secret dream of having a business pretty much everybody at some stage does is that mm -hmm. what you found jane Oh, you know, I think when I was a little girl, all I wanted was to have a business. Um, and then I didn't really know what, though. So it was always, oh, I want a business. I want a business. But I had no idea. And the problem mm -hmm. is when you don't have an idea, nothing happens. But yeah. you need to, you know, if you had a bit of guidance. Because I remember even when I was in England in the 19... 90s i went on a start your own business course everyone oh, had wow. a business idea except me i just went <laughs> and I thought, well, maybe i'll get some inspiration <laughs> but inspiration didn't come and so you know 20 years later that's when i became a coach and a consultant and um you you just you, if you have a business idea and you've got a hankering after something sometimes you, you don't take that first step because you're afraid of failure. And mm. what's failure anyway? It's always just mm. experimentation and then you adjust and you adjust. Yeah. yeah, and, you know, that that fear of failure really does mm. hold people back, doesn't it? Because we get into this kind of stuck, we get, um, you know, like, and to get unstuck means taking action. Mm. And if you, you know, if we wait for the fear to go away and if we wait for everything to be perfect, that's that doesn't really happen, does it? We kind of have to feel the fear and do it anyway. I don't know who said that, but it feels like that's somebody's quote. But it is it's often a leap of faith, isn't it? Just mm -hmm. to take your idea out there. And you know, I know you've written a book that talks about having a business. I've written what was that thing we practiced earlier with our books? I've oh, written a book. Well, called Hang on, hang on, you're jumping. Hang on. You are jumping. I want this gap. I want to fill up this gap in my wall. I need something. First of all, first of all, I think we're all talking about, first of all, for those who are listening, uh, the, re the reason why we're here is because it's time for global connection. Okay, so here, if you want to watch any of our other LinkedIn lives and go to time for global connection, the hashtag on LinkedIn and you'll find it. But if you are listening and you're thinking about starting a business, what business would you like to start? Type it in the comments so that we know and then we can follow up with you after today. Yes. And like so I think, OK, Ingrid, you had your book there. You're waving it around. Tell us, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I've just realised what I can do. I've got a poster of my book I could put on the wall because I, I, I asked if I could paint our, um, this is our shared office space now, and I asked if I could paint the wall green and didn't. it wasn't really very well received. So anyway, I have written a book called So You Want to Start a Business because I've been working with small businesses for nearly 20 years. I left the corporate world just after 2000 and I've worked with small businesses for that length of time. And over that time, I've realised that there's certain steps for people to take and all of that is encompassed in this book um, and it's really about solving a problem that's a need that's a gap and right now there's so much opportunity for people to see a gap to fill a need to create a business mm -hmm. and Ingrid you have a podcast called so you want to start a business don't forget that <laughs> that's right and I interview people to tell their business startup story and you know there's 120 something podcasts there now and there's some really terrific stories and lots of different types of businesses but there's some recurring themes there that if people listen to a few episodes they'll um, they'll certainly hear recurring themes and one of the unique things about my podcast is I ask the same questions 
questions in every podcast. So it's that formula of the same questions. So for 120 something episodes, I've asked people the same questions. And it's fascinating what people say, you know, because mm -hmm. I ask them why they started, what was underpinning that, um, you know, when did they realise they were in business? Because that's a magic moment for people that you just never forget. So, yeah, the mm -hmm. podcast, the book, yeah. Yeah, I remember you asked me those same questions on the podcast as well, which is quite fun because the shoe was on the other foot. It was, <laughs> because, it was, because um, you normally are the one asking questions, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, okay, so quick, quick, brief introduction. So I wrote Navigating Career Crossroads. So what this is, it really helps you to, to figure out who you are, what's important to you, build your self-confidence so you can take the next step in your career. And um the second edition is coming out in May, COVID-19 permitting. And um, I also have Your Career podcast where I too interview uh, professionals, but professionals who've made interesting career changes, some into employment again, but into different industries or job functions, but many transition into entrepreneurship. And I asked them how they make that leap, how they felt when they made the transition, because so often you do feel like, oh, you know, is, is this really me? I've got that imposter syndrome. Who am I to run my own business? And it's very interesting to hear the stories. And so, Ingrid, pop your book up. Let's do that thing that we were, Let's do that, that we were trying to do earlier. There we go. It, it, this makes a lot of sense, because if you're navigating your career crossroads and you're thinking about starting a business, this is why we decided to collaborate, because we take you through that entire process of exploration right through to actually building and launching your business yeah yep. so so that's what we enjoy and I still would like to know if you are thinking about starting your own business uh, do pop it in the chat box now I'm just going to have a quick refresh of this just to see just in case if there's um some oh, let me see oh there's James from Columbia hello and Debbie Debbie from Oh, you haven't told me where you're from, but good morning, good morning. And so, good morning, well, it's afternoon now in Sydney. And um, so how about, should we just start with some of the things that people need to think about yeah. if they are considering starting their own business? Because we're all at home at the moment, we're self-isolating. Uh, some people are still working, like I'm still working because I coach via Zoom and you're still working as well, Ingrid. But there are many who are not able to work now. And so what better time than to start putting you know plans into place so that perhaps you can launch a side project or mm -hmm. your own business when the mm -hmm. time is right because actually I, I just heard today that um uh, what the economists are saying is that in 2021 they anticipate because obviously the economy is going down now but they're mm -hmm. anticipating about a six to seven percent growth in 2021 so if that's mm -hmm. the case do your planning now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely you know and and Something I've just thought about this morning as I was getting ready for our conversation today, Jane, with the way things are changing, this is a really good test to see if you are the sort of person who could run their own business. Because one mm. of the things, the first question I like to ask people is, who are you to start a business? And then the second one is, is your business idea viable? Because there's two parts mm. to it. There's you and then there's your business idea. So if you're laying on the couch watching Netflix, eating popcorn or whatever it is people do when they're laying on the couch, and you've been doing that for a couple of weeks, then if you're thinking about starting a business, laying on the couch is not going to get you to the business outcome. So how you use your time is actually a really good indicator of how you might be if you had your own business. Because, Jane, I don't know about you, but in the early days of running my business, I wasn't quite sure how to manage my time. Mm. And, you know, maybe I'd have a coffee with someone because it felt like I could because freedom was one of my things. So, you know, that's that. Yeah. What do you think about that? Mm. Oh, time management. I, I tell you, when you have to make a sales call for your business <laughs> and you don't like sales, like I really don't like sales, I have to force myself to do it. I'd much rather do the ironing. And that's one of the dangerous <laughs> things because there's a lot of distraction when working yes. from home. But yes. I think if you're going, if you're thinking about starting a business, one of the most important things is to have a business idea. Is it a product-based business or okay. is it a service that you're going to offer? And if it's a product-based business, oh my goodness, right now with COVID-19, where are you going to be getting your products from or are you going to make your own? 
that could be yeah. interesting. You know, yeah. one, one thing I just want to tell you, I thought it was very funny because last week was my husband's birthday. And oh, I noticed wow. that this bakery that was, um, you know, on the verge of shutting down had a brilliant idea to start making a specialty birthday cake or just a specialty cake in the shape with marzipan of a toilet roll. <laughs> and I saw it on Instagram and I thought I have to get this for Tony's birthday. And so I ordered it and um, the, it was a, a bakery in DY and they delivered and it looked so realistic. It was like a toilet roll. It's fantastic. So we had a Zoom birthday party with all the family and I put sparklers, you know, into the birthday cake and there it was. But how innovative. Yes. And as a business owner, you need to be innovative and creative all the time yeah. in case market forces change or the economy or the health or you know, pandemics who knows what's going to affect your business it's been so fascinating i work a lot with health and well-being professionals so a lot of my clients are um you know physiotherapists chiropractors dentists optometrists and then there's the pilates instructors yoga instructors and you know on the 23rd of march at midday a lot of their business just was switched off because mm -hmm. the government said in Australia, this is what we have to do on the Monday, the 23rd of March. And so it's been fascinating. We're now, this is week five, to watch how those different businesses have responded. You know, what have they been able to do? So a whole lot of the um, health-based businesses that was always go and see your clinician in the treatment room have now gone online. So there's a whole lot of tele everything tele-doctoring, tele-dentistry, tele-physiotherapy, tele-chiropractor. Now, they can't do the physical touching part, but they certainly can do the, and thank you, Zoom, for a lot of this. Mm -hmm. Pilates, yoga has gone online. PTs mm -hmm. have gone online. And so in business, you can have all the best plans in the world, but the outside forces can sometimes be completely outside your control. So how do you, how do you respond to it is much more important than what's actually happening. You know, when you're thinking about starting a business, I think one of the, the first things to do is to assess yourself and what your own personal character traits are as well, mm -hmm. because there are certain traits that will help you to become a more successful entrepreneur or small business owner. And one yeah. of them is resilience and mm -hmm. another one is resourcefulness because mm -hmm. stuff's going to happen all the time, good stuff and bad stuff as well. But if you're able to bounce back and not just give up the first time that there's a challenge, that that's a wonderful trait to have as resilience and resourcefulness because people are not going to hand everything to you on a plate. It's not always going to be easy. And there are a lot of moving parts when you start a business. So you need to be resourceful enough to know where to go, who to tap into, where to get expertise from if you don't have it yourself. So if you're you're pretty resilient and you are resourceful, uh, that already puts you on a really good starting point. And when it comes to why you want to start a business, if it's to make lots and lots of money, well, that's nice. But if things get tough, you might just stop, don't you think? But if yeah. you know your real reason why and that driving force and the passion that keeps you going, even when the going gets tough, because mm. it's like a roller coaster ride when you run your own business. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. You, know, you do need resilience and you do yeah. need to be able to be resourceful but you know when things are going well oh my gosh it just is marvelous Jane isn't it mm -hmm. you know when you can be in your bed sleeping and something is being sold online because that's what you've got you've got a system set up with sold online when you talk to a client and you just they email you afterwards or they say at the end of it oh my gosh I feel like a different person at the end of this session mm -hmm. yeah I'm with you you know I just got an email this morning from someone who said you know we've been working together for a few weeks and she said Ingrid I don't know how I would have got through this few weeks without the work that we're doing together mm -hmm. and you know that's that's why I do what I do is to mm -hmm. just bring that experience that I have to other people and support and encourage. But, you know, my sister has a beautiful expression. She talks about being hungry. And, mm. um, you know, when we talk about resourceful and, 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 and resilient, she says, you know, that she sees people who are, is, is, if you're hungry enough mm. um, and you've got to want it, um, you know, and it's not in a bad way. You don't stab people in the back to get there and you don't crawl over people, but it's that real <laughs> hunger. And that, see, mm. there's, there's a part of me that's a, um, 
I'm a squirrel, so I don't really like the idea of ever being hungry. So I've got my stash of money stashed away. I've got my stash of whatever I need um, so that if there's a rainy day, and right now for a lot of people, this COVID is a typhoon. You know, it's not just a rainy day. So, you know, I always say to people, if you're wanting to get started in a business, make sure you've got some resources behind you. But the downside of that is that you can actually it, it's not a rainy day, you know, like if you've got your stash and you've got to make those phone calls, those sales calls, then you might have your ironing instead because you've got your stash and you can rely on that. So there's that flip side, isn't there, between being hungry and having too much, you know, squirreled away that you don't actually go out and do the work to make the business successful. Yeah, well, you do have to spend money in order to make money you as do well. Have to. I just want to do a shout out to some of the, the people who very nicely have said hello. Um, Dominique Carroll, hello from Brisbane, um, is in coaching. So we've got James, Devi, Dominique, Tony from Southwestern Sydney, hello, hello. Uh, Sudia from New Delhi. Um, Herbert from, oh, I don't know how to pronounce this, Waldkirch in Germany. I hope I said that correctly. Oh, Amy, hi, Amy. Lovely, lovely to see you here as well. <laughs> okay, so that's fantastic that these people must are be the middle of the night here. in Germany. If it's mm -hmm. the middle of the day here, it must be the middle of the night there. Um, I think I think now should be about three or four in the morning. What are you doing awake at three or four in the morning? That's right. <laughs> Jane, okay. I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm awake at three or four in the morning. <laughs> that's one of the. Yeah. <laughs> well, but I did that you... in the corporate world as well. When I was... yeah. I think sometimes when you've got a brilliant idea, because I think true entrepreneurs always have ideas on the go. But, you know, so for anyone thinking about starting their own business, you know, besides passion and drive and resilience and resourcefulness, that's all very important. But there are four different ways to actually go into business. Yes. The one very obvious way is to leverage your existing experience, which is what I do and what, what you do, Ingrid, into consulting or coaching. And um, that actually is the easiest way to set up your business, because if you've got a laptop and a phone and a bit of nous, you can actually do it. The hard bit is the marketing and the ongoing sales. And like I've been coaching now for 20 years. So referral businesses, you know, always come through because that's nice. You've got happy, happy clients and customers, and then they refer more business to you. And same thing for you. You've been in business about 20 years as well. Gosh, we've been around a long time, Ingrid. I know. <laughs> but but what, what's so good is, is that we like to share as much um, of our experience and expertise and care as possible to help other people be successful but yes. with consulting now I'll, I'll talk about two and then you talk about two okay so consulting is yeah. one option um, another option is to start your own business right from scratch and you create your own business systems you decide on your own product or service and it's your baby so consulting and starting your own business and then the other two Ingrid I'll leave to you you could buy somebody else's or you can have mm. a franchise mm. Mm. the only thing is is when you buy someone else's business, the good thing is, is that you've got um, ready customers already there, but then you might inherit some problems. Right. Well, I, I do think this particular time, there is actually going to be businesses for sale um, that could be quite viable businesses that maybe the business owner uses this as an opportunity to say, well, you know what? I've been thinking about it and I'm just going to cut my losses and I'm going to sell the business and I'm going to get out right now um, for whatever reason. And so there could actually be quite a lot of businesses on sale right soon. Yeah, coming up. Oh, isn't there a large airline? Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a terrific airline. example because there's 10 people lined up to, yeah, there's no shortage exactly of people right. to buy that. It's, it's a bit beyond my scope. <laughs> Yeah. Seriously, who would want to run something that size? I don't know. <laughs> well, some people like to build an empire. Other people like to create a lifestyle business. That's one of the important things you need to decide as well. What is it that you want? For example, I run a coaching practice and it's run under my own name. And so when I'm gone, it's gone. I don't want to build an empire. I just want to do what I want to do, create a lifestyle business so I have um, sufficient income to be able to live the life that I would like. Um, but I do know many people who want to build an empire and have, you know, many, many people working for them and just get bigger and then go for an IPO at the end of the day. And um, that that's a really exciting business to build as well. 
It is. Well, like Eric mm. Wan, who mm. um, created Zoom, not mm. to, but to create an empire. Well, we're actually not using Zoom right now, but this is mm. one of the many platforms that are like that. Mm. Um, and who knew 10 years ago he was going to build something like this? And yeah. that's quite an empire. Mm. Yeah. And, you, you know, even though people say, oh, it's such a challenging time and it's so hard for me and I don't know if I'll be able to get another job or how on earth am I going to start my own business, whenever there is challenge, there is always opportunity. Absolutely. Where there's change, there are opportunities. So um, being you know, open and aware and just have mm. a look and think, you know, what's missing right now? Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm just thinking, you know, you know, like supermarkets. OK, so people still need to go to supermarkets, but now they need so many more delivery people. Yes. Um, and so, you know, the, Woolies is actually doing very well, as is Coles and IGA, because, you know, we're still going to always have to buy stuff. And a lot of businesses that have not been online are now starting to go online. And I, I actually um, I went into a store yesterday when I was on my my daily power walk and um, I was saying, you know, you've got some great products here. You know, can I purchase them online? And they said, oh, we're just setting up our, our website now. So they're a little bit on the back foot because mm -hmm. if they'd done it a few weeks ago, I'm sure they would have had a lot more sales as well because yes. fewer people are actually going in through the door. Yeah, yeah. And I think I, I do wonder with that, and it happens in any kind of business, is something happens and you think, oh, this is only for a short time or like we still don't know how long this is going to go on, you know, mm. in terms of, you know, what sort of what, because it's being dictated outside of our control. So mm. I always like to encourage people to think about what is it you can control and what you can control is the product and service that you offer and mm. who you and how you offer it and being the best at it that you can possibly be. And, mm. you know, I have, I have a lovely quote that sits on my desk here and it says it might have been done before but it hasn't been done by you so mm -hmm. even if you have an idea that's been done and in fact I encourage people and you know we've had this discussion Jane it's actually good to go into an industry that's already existing because to go into something that's absolutely brand spanking disruptive new that takes so much more energy to launch into that whereas to go into something like you and I have both done that already existed and then we have our speciality for that mm. and also because if it already exists you know there's a market for it that's yes. why it exists that's why it exists. all you need to do is to come up with your unique selling proposition, your product or your service that is different from someone else's. Mm -hmm. and, and I found if you've got something unique or especially say if you're a consultant, if you've got your own process, your own methodology, um, and you can create your own methodology, it becomes yours as well. Yes. And that's what you become known for. So like, You've got your specialty here is so you want to start a business. For me, it's navigating career crossroads, finding out really the meaning of life, what's really important to you. And, you know, what was interesting is, is um, in this, this book, um, I've created my seven steps careers program. One is first to confidently manage change because you need confidence before you can take the next step. Then assess what makes you tick. And the acronym is careers. So C, confidently manage change. A, assess what makes you tick because once you get clarity, you, you know what you can do next. R is resumes and your marketing materials. E is express your personal brand. And branding is very, very important for businesses, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then exploring job search strategies if you're looking for a job. Relate your value and impress interviews because you'll need interviews, of course. But even as a business owner, you need to be networking. And every time you're pitching, it's almost like an interview. Yes. And then strategies for success moving forward. So with that acronym, there's a seven step process. And you've got a special process too, Ingrid. I do. I need to make my seven steps into something that startup because startup is yeah. seven steps i need to figure yeah. out how i can make my seven steps oh, let's <laughs> work on it together i think that would something, be really fun uh, yeah let's get a glass of wine or a gin and tonic or something <laughs> i think we need to get a gin and tonic so the first so my first step i just mm. um my first step is who are you to start a business and mm. then the second one is you know what is your idea mm. and then who is your client because it's really important to know who your client is mm. and then um you know what is your structure what are your finances and what is your marketing? And so, you know, when we have, oh, and I skipped brand. I, because <laughs> that's 
that's really actually, important. I'm going to be super, super in, in like um, that's why you and I are working together on this because brands not my strong point. Is you know I look at some beautiful brands. I have a couple of friends who run businesses, and I I love that consistency of brand. And you know when we were talking about putting this together, you said to me, "Wear something blue because it matches my blue um, of my book." And um, you know so it's you know like really trying to stay on brand is so important. So yes, those are my seven steps. And you know this each of those aspects is a is a is a work in itself and i know that's what we go through in our master class don't we jane mm-hmm. do you yeah, want to mention right. that before we finish um, yeah i think we should because i would love to carry on for another half hour but i actually have to go to the hospital and pick up my husband who's just had yes. an operation today so life happens um life and happens. so yes yeah, so now ingrid and i have come together because we do as you just said we complement each other very very well you're navigating your career crossroads right now you're not sure what's right for you and then you want to start a business so of course we've come together and we've created a build your business masterclass. and if you'd like to know more just go to you see the link on the screen at the moment it's https okay and it's a bitly link so if you copy it exactly and i'll also put it in the comments and we'll do a post with a link as well um but bitly bit bit.ly forward slash bbb masterclass all lowercase you'll be able to register for our free masterclass which takes you through the entire process in a structured manner so that you can actually get moving okay and if that will help you during these times and give you something to do instead of watching netflix you can you can listen and watch jane and ingrid that's right and then then i'm sure that something good will come out of it because you'll be able to, to decide is this for me or should i really be looking for a job later but if it's for you then we give you those steps you must take to start your own business yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Just give it a try. Go out and talk to people. Imagine it as a side hustle. It'll become a business. Whatever it is you want. So, shall we just? Um, I'm going to put my book okay, back here. Book. I just, okay. It's so funny, you know. This is mirrored. Like what I can see is the mirror of what. There we go. So, start a business, navigating career crossroads, mm-hmm. and, and is there any questions? We match our books. We match our books quite well, don't we? We do. We definitely <laughs> do. We do. Are there any questions in that chat before we go? So we make sure we don't leave any questions unanswered. Um, we've got. Oh, I need my glasses. Find the back to that. Oh, um, it's Rastio. Hello. Oh, from Singapore. Oh my goodness, Barnabas from PNG. Hello, and Leo. Leo from Canada. Um, just incredible. And who? Are, and Seema. Hello, Seema. And you're in Sydney, Seema, aren't you? Yes. Oh, we don't have any questions. We don't have any questions. Everyone's just saying hello and letting us know where you're from. And it's really nice to know where you're from, but no one's told us what their business idea might be because they're keeping it secret. Yes. Hmm. yes. <laughs> well, eventually you have to talk to someone about it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Now, listen, please, if you're watching this and if you want to start your own business, go and take our free Build Your Business Masterclass and connect with Ingrid, connect with me, and we, we'd love to assist you. But I bet you once you've taken the masterclass you're going to feel a lot more confident absolutely 